Hello and welcome to this overview of the Next Search Catalog. Today we're going to take a tour of this website and talk about the features and resources you can find and share with the patrons at your library. One thing I'd like to suggest is that while you as a staff member have access to the staff client of our Next Search Catalog, do use the patron facing catalog as well. This way you can be familiar with the catalog, known in library circles as an OPAC, Online Public Access Catalog, more on that later, and you will be able to help your patrons make use of this valuable tour or uh, tool. Now on to the tour. This is the home page of the catalog where, where you go to nextkansas.org. Uh, this is what you see. Um, this is something that uh, patrons can use to find the resources that we share at the uh, as Neckles libraries. It also provides a gateway into the nearly one million items that are owned by the libraries that make up the next consortium. The main feature here is the search bar at the very top of the page. Uh, it is um, where patrons can enter the title, subject, or author of a material they're looking for and hopefully get a response from the catalog that will help them find that material. All of the print items held by Next Libraries will appear here, as well as many of the items we offer through Hoopla, a service that Neckles helps to support that offers ebooks, audiobooks, e audiobooks, e comics, TV shows, movies, and records. So I'm going to be throwing around some terms during this video, and I thought we'd take a moment to talk about what those terms mean for you as a uh, library staffer. So we'll start off with OPAC. I've already used that uh, once or twice. That stands for Online Public Access Catalog and it is the public facing part of the integrated library system, uh, the ILS, that your library uses to manage its business. Uh, for more information about the ILS, the, the staff side generally, uh, see the overview video that we have on what is an ILS for more. Um, placing a hold is something that patrons can do, uh, whether the book is in on the shelves or whether it's out, uh, they can indicate that they want it. Uh, they go into the uh, catalog, find the book they want, place a hold in their account, and then it shows up on a hold list for you, uh, again using the ILS, and you pull it, set it aside, and they come and pick it up. Uh, I do this a lot with my public library because it's easier to let them pull it and just go to the whole t shelf and pick it up rather than hope it's still there when I <laughs> when I get around to, to getting to the uh, to the library. So I find it very useful. Uh, I'm sure other people do as well and, and placing a hold is, is one of the major features of our online public access catalog. I also wanted to talk a little bit about the PIN, um, personal identification number. In Koha it's tends to be called the password. They're the same thing. Uh, passwords can be letters, numbers, any combination thereof, but it's just basically the the security to make sure that uh, patrons, only the right patron gets into their account. Uh, I also want to talk a little bit about some of the organizational terms I'll be using. NECLS, of course, is Northeast Kansas Library System, and we are the regional system for the 14 counties in the Northeast Kans corner of Kansas. Uh, that is um, set up via the um, state library, or the state uh, statute, sorry. <laughs> uh, and so we are uh, given our powers by the force of law. Uh, so um, we're here for you guys and uh, we are tax supported. Uh, we tax in the places you don't in Kansas, so outside of your your taxing area. We, we collect the taxes for that and then we return those taxes back to you, your library, in the form of subsidized things like the next consortium, um, which is the catalog, the ILS, that we all share. Um, the I don't know, I think it's it's almost 50 libraries now uh, have access and use the next uh, catalog, next search catalog, uh, of which the OPAC that we're talking about today is, is a big part. Um, but the idea behind using the same catalog is we can share books very easily. And part of that um, ability to share books very easily involves things like the Courier, which runs books from uh, one library to the next. Most of you have courier service at least three days a week, some have five, uh, and that 
picks up books that are on have been put on hold by patrons of other libraries, takes them to that library so that they can be picked up, or uh, it drops off books that have been placed on hold by your patrons so that they can pick them up at your library. Uh, they also support ILL, which is Interlibrary Loan, and that is, I mean, technically what we do moving books from one library to another is interlibrary loan. But what we consider interlibrary loan is outside of the next consortium. So if you're borrowing books from another system or from a academic library, even in Nichols, if you're borrowing books from the KU library or or, uh, or Johnson County Public Library, uh, they're not part of the next consortium, so that's an interlibrary loan. We'll look at briefly um, the e-resources that are available through our catalog interface and I just wanted to go through them very quickly here. Um, the first one that I'm going to mention is Hoopla. That is a um, streaming service that offers television, movies, ebooks, audiobooks, and comics and you get uh, so many checkouts per month. Uh, the library is charged per checkout so that, that uh, number of checkouts is determined by the library and the library's budget, uh, but there's no waiting. It, there are no um, holds because it's instant simultaneous access for the resources in Hoopla. Hoopla is not a great choice for first run movies and really recent um, stuff except for like the music and the um, audiobooks tend to come out pretty quickly, but uh, uh, movies uh, it tends to be kind of the long tail of content the stuff that maybe you're not searching for but you run across and decide to watch that's that's the kind of thing you're going to find on hoopla we also have links to the databases that the state library provides and those include everything from traditional indexes of journals and magazines to the mango languages uh, learning um, application to uh, learning express and Universal Class, which offer classes on all kinds of different things, all available through the State Library with links from our, our OPAC. Another option uh, that we service that we have here at the Next Consortium is Flipster, where we share 64-ish, um, I think, uh, I forget exactly how many, magazine subscriptions online. So you can read um, a magazine either online or download it to your your device and read it while offline either way uh, and that is is each library chooses either a magazine to subscribe to or provides a little contribution to the pool and those are um, offered Nichols buys a few magazine subscriptions as well and those are offered to all of our patrons everybody with a next card can access Flipster. Overdrive uh, which is connected with Libby, um, which is the kind of interface to OverDrive, is something that not all of our next libraries have. So you're not going to find OverDrive resources in the catalog because what's in the catalog is only, in the OPAC, is only stuff that is collected by or available to every patron of Next. And the OverDrive stuff is only available to the 11 or so libraries that subscribe to OverDrive. So um, you can't find those resources in the catalog, but I do want you to be aware of them because some libraries have OverDrive. You may hear about it. Um, it is very similar to um, some of the state resources like the Cloud Library, the 3M, where you can check out books. They are not like Hoopla where you can you know simultaneously have multiple people. You will go on hold for, <laughs> for books in OverDrive uh, if they're in use. But it is uh, something that's out there, and, and I did want you to be aware of it. Libby is the interface, the, the application that um, they have created that helps you use OverDrive on your device. So something we will be talking about is search terms. Um, these are the title, author, keyword, whatever you enter into that search box uh, to, to make your uh, results page show up, uh, those are considered called search terms. Uh, and those search terms can be limited 
by either using filters or facets or limits, there's different words for them. You can either go into your advanced search and do uh, the limits before you search, or you can go ahead and enter your search terms, hit enter, and then um, end up limiting after the search. So when your results come up, you, you will see on the left the filters that you can use. The results are the list of items in the catalog that are pulled up using those search terms that match the search terms in some way. And depending on how you search, what kind of limits and, and facets you use will determine the kinds of results that you get. So that's it. Those are the terms. So one of the many resources we offer through the catalog is access to electronic databases and other materials that both Knuckles and the State Library of Kansas provides. That's found here in References and Resources. Other resources that the catalog offers includes lists of member libraries and help function to assist users in using the catalog. Getting help in the catalog is just a matter of clicking that question mark on the home page and then clicking on the type of help that you need. We offer lists of our member libraries. If you need a phone number or mailing address for one of your colleagues, you can find it there, as well as maps of where those libraries are located. In case you want to take a road trip or need to pick up or deliver something to a neighboring library. We also have links to state library card information and uh, for both patrons and library staff, and a link that takes you to some training materials uh, for the catalog that patrons can use. Of course, as a Nichols Region Library staff member, you can always email us at nexthelp at nichols.org with any questions or concerns. The other basic functions of the catalog include allowing patrons to find and obtain materials from the library. For this, there are features such as searching, managing their accounts, and putting items on hold. Searching in the catalog can be done either as a basic keyword search of all the libraries in the system, which is the default when you search when you type a search string into the search box, or there's an advanced search that allows patrons to focus on a particular item type, DVD or book or collection code, uh, easy reader, chapter book, cozy mystery, something like that, as well as limiting the age group for the items found. You can also limit by availability, is it actually in the library right now? or date range of the publication, was it published in the last five years? And you can sort the results by relevance, popularity, author, or any number of options. Those are those filters and, and limits and facets that I mentioned earlier. The catalog, without any limitations, through the advanced search, will search all items at all libraries that are in the catalog. This includes some Hoopla and Cloud Library titles, but does not include any OverDrive titles like I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can use those filters that I talked about to search just your local library for items or you can uh, that you can put your hands on immediately or you can put holds on things uh, and look for other or do other searches. So here are a list of the libraries that that own the books that come up. Uh, here are the types of materials, audiobooks and books. Here are the authors. If I wanted to filter by that, I could also filter by Alaska or um, other subjects that are here. So lots of different filters are available. If your library subscribes to OverDrive, check with your coworkers on how to direct patrons to that resource. Like I mentioned, they're not listed here. Patrons, when they hit the magnifying glass to start the search, are presented with a list of resources. Results. Sorry. You can see that the Hoopla results are shown at the top, and then a list of all the results from the print materials are below. Each record shows title, author, and whatever information was included in the record when it was added to the catalog. Along the left side are the limiters that are very similar to the ones available through advanced search. So if you do a basic search and then decide you want to limit, you can do it either before or after you search. Um, from this search results page, you can see click a title to see more about the book or place a hold on the book directly from the results list, which was back here. But you can place the hold here or here. However, 
to do that, you have to be logged into the catalog. So, patrons will log into the catalog using their login ID, usually their library card barcode, although for me it's my name because that's how I set it up, and their password, uh, also known as PIN in some places, but password here. So we're going to go ahead and log in to my account. Often that information is set up when the card is created, the, the barcode and, and password. We cannot see what the password is on the account through the SAF client, but you can change it for a patron through that, that interface if you need to. Once a patron has logged in, they can see their currently checked out books. Um, let's go to your account so we can see these things. Uh, their account status if they have uh, fines or restrictions and place holds on books that are held by any member library for them to pick up at their home library when it arrives. That's that courier uh, action going on there. This login page also gives them links to the Flipster service, a way for them to change their password on their own, as well as their checkout history if they turned it on. It is not turned on by default. Some people do want to keep it uh, on. Others do not want to have that information uh, um, recorded because if it's not recorded you can't be subpoenaed right check for a tutorial on patron logging in on the uh, Nichols LMS at the learning resources site speaking of holds one of the strengths of the next consortium is the ability for our patrons to access any of the nearly 1 million items held by the 50 or so libraries in our system easily and quickly they can do this by locating an item in the catalog and placing a hold on it. That alerts the library that owns the item to pull it from their shelves and bag it up to be sent via the courier to your library. When the courier comes to your library with the item, you will scan the book into the staff client and get notified about who placed the book on hold. If they chose email notifications, they'll get one as well. Otherwise, you can call the patron to inform them that their hold is in and will be there for seven days. Once the patron picks up the item, it's checked out to them and they enjoy it. When they return it, you scan it back into the system. You'll be notified about which library it will be traveling to next so you can get it into a courier bag and out the door for the next patron. There are some books that are not available for holds at some libraries. Some libraries have walk-in only or, only or local only collections that cannot be sent out to other libraries. Most of our materials, however, are shareable. The courier is a vital step in this process of sharing. This is a statewide service that we manage here at Nichols that allows our patrons to access materials from all over the state. For materials found outside our region, the State Library Share It service is used quickly and easily. Most libraries have either a three or five day courier service, so there are materials moving from library to library every day of the week, keeping our Kansas patrons stocked with the books and other materials they want to enjoy. So head on over to the Nichols Online Resor Learning Resources page for more information about the Next Search Catalog and other resources that Nichols provides for your member library.